Ramon Olorunwa Abbas, commonly known as Hush Puppy, Hush or Ray Hush Puppy, was born on October 11th, 1982, and is a Nigerian Instagram celebrity who is facing criminal charges in the United States of conspiracy to launder money obtained from business email compromise, frauds, and other scams, including schemes that defrauded a U.S. law firm of about $1 million, illegally transferred $14.7 million from a foreign financial institution, and targeted to steal $124 million from an English Premier League football club. To continue learning the story of Ramon Oloronwa Abbas, then keep watching until the end of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Now without further ado, let's get started. Abbas was born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. He would later emigrate to Malaysia and to the United Arab Emirates where he would live till his arrest. He admitted to fathering a child in 2013. According to a friend, Abbas had his secondary school education in government college Ikoruda, Lagos State. Many news platforms also reported that Abbas was once a second-hand clothes seller in Lagos. Abbas prided himself on his humble beginnings. He is also known to put inspirational captions on his posts. In an exclusive post in which interviewed old neighbors of Mr. Abbas, the Cable.ng reported that Abbas had a reputation as a Yahoo boy, a local name for a cyber criminal, was not supported by his mother, had not lifted any of his old friends from poverty, and had ignored multiple warnings regarding his lifestyle. He is the subject of a 2017 song, Telly Person, by Nigerian singer Timaya, featuring Olamide and Fino, with whom he had a long-running feud. The song contained lyrics directed towards Abbas, indirectly accusing him of being a swindler, and lavishing his money on design clothes instead of investing in profitable ventures and warning him that he would soon be caught by authorities. Many viewed the song as a prophetic warning that was fulfilled with his arrest. The FBI, according to an affidavit, said Mr. Abbas financed his extravagant lifestyle with proceeds of his crime. He made an initial court appearance in Chicago after arriving with the FBI from the United Arab Emirates, where he had been living, prosecutors said in a statement. He is expected to be transferred to Los Angeles to face charges pending there in the coming weeks, they said. Abbas and his unnamed others in his network specialized in what is known as business email compromise schemes, authorities said. That type of scheme generally involves involves gaining unauthorized access to a corporate email account or otherwise tricking a business into sending a wire transfer to the scammers. Abbas allegedly conspired with others to launder hundreds of millions of dollars in scams targeting a law firm, a bank, and an English Premier League soccer club, according to a criminal complaint filed in federal court. Abbas's Instagram account is flooded with displays of wealth, from luxury cars to private jets, as well as videos and photos of him globe-trotting with celebrities, including a Manchester City soccer player, a Nigerian singer, and a Turkish chef. He is alleged to be the leader of a mafia behind computer intrusion, business email compromise fraud, and money laundering. He duped his victims, who are majorly in the US, of hundreds of millions of dollars, the FBI said until his arrest by the Dubai police in June of 2020 and his extradition to the United States, Abbas had a global following of over 2.5 million followers on Instagram, where he posted pictures and videos of his lavish spending on exotic cars, watches, designer clothes, bags from luxury brands like Gucci, Fendi, and Louis Vuitton, and of himself boarding helicopters with celebrity, footballers, and Nigerian politicians or while on charter jets. He claimed to be a real estate developer. He holds a passport from St. Kitts and Navis. On the night, his apartment at the Palazzo Versace was raided in an operation codenamed Fox Hunt 2. Abbas was arrested alongside 11 others in six simultaneous raids. Detectives seized more than 150 million dirham or 40 million US dollars in cash, 13 luxury cars worth 25 million dirham or 7 million dollars, 21 laptops, 47 smartphones, 15 memory storage devices, 5 external hard drives, and 800,000 emails of potential victims alongside suitcases full of cash. The arrest was part of an FBI investigation that convicted him of being a key player in a transnational cybercrime network that provided safe havens for stolen money around the world. Mr. Abbas's lawyer, Gal Pisetsky, told the BBC that his client was not a criminal and had made his money legitimately from being paid by designer brands for promotion and from real estate. Mr. Pisetsky also told the BBC that the United States had no authority to transport his client from Dubai. In my opinion, the FBI and the government here acted illegally when they kidnapped him from Dubai without any legal process to do so. 
There was no extradition, there were no legal steps taken, there were no court documents filed. It was simply a call to the FBI. He is not a citizen of the United States. The US had no authority to take him. But the Dubai police said in a Facebook post that the FBI director had thanked them for extraditing the two men. Upon his arrival in the United States on July 3rd, he was accused of conspiring to launder hundreds of millions of dollars. According to that previously mentioned FBI affidavit, Abbas and others had committed a BEC scheme that defrauded a client of a New York-based law firm out of approximately $922,857,000 on October 2019. Abbas and co-conspirators allegedly tricked one of the law firm's paralegals into wiring money intended for the client's real estate refinancing to a bank account that was controlled by Abbas and the co-conspirators. Abbas and his partners had laundered $396,050 while one of them was in California. The affidavit also accused Abbas and his partners of conspiring to launder funds intended to be stolen through fraudulent wire transfers from a foreign financial institution in which fraudulent wire transfers totaling approximately 14.7 million US dollars were sent to bank accounts around the world in February 2019. Although the affidavit did not name any specific bank, According to Forbes, the date of the attack and the amount mentioned in the affidavit matched that of the attack on Malta's Bank of Valletta in February 2019. Around that time, 14.7 million US dollars was transferred out of the bank through false international transactions to accounts in the United States, the United Kingdom, the Czech Republic, and Hong Kong. The attack was of such seriousness in Malta that the then Prime Minister Joseph Muscat was forced to address Parliament. Multiple sources in Malta, including Times of Malta and Malta Today, also repeated Forbes' claims that Hush Puppy could have been behind the attack. According to the affidavit, Abbas had provided a co-conspirator with two bank accounts in Europe anticipating the receipt of $5.6 million each of the fraudulently obtained funds. Also, other communications between Abbas and one of his co-conspirators indicated that the two had conspired to launder tens and at times hundreds of millions of dollars that were proceeds of other fraudulent schemes and computer intrusions, including a fraudulent scheme to steal 100 million pounds or 124 million US dollars from an English Premier League football club. A request for his bail and the chance to stay with his girlfriend's uncle in Homewood, Illinois, was denied on the grounds that presented a risk of a non-appearance. At Abbas's detention hearing, his lawyer, Pisetsky, told the court that his client posed no flight risk because of the damage it would do to his celebrity online, adding, He is loved and respected. He is a celebrity. He would not want to ruin his credibility and status rather than stay here and face these allegations. Prosecutors cited his significant financial assets, deep ties to foreign countries, and a lack of ties to the United States. If convicted of conspiracy to engage in money laundering, Abbas would face a statutory maximum sentence of 20 years in federal prison, after which he will be deported. Mr. Abbas, alongside Alolekan Ponle, popularly known as Woodbury, was extradited to Chicago in the United States where he was first arraigned. However, because the U.S. court in Illinois does not have a jurisdiction over the case, he was transferred to Los Angeles, California. At the pretrial services, Mr. Abbas pleaded not guilty to the four counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, money laundering conspiracies, international money laundering, and engaging in monetary transactions in property derived from specified unlawful activity. He is demanded to be prosecuted with complaint and not indictment. He did this by filing a waiver of indictment accepted by the court. A complaint is the statement of the law enforcement agents containing essential facts of the offenses. On the other hand, to obtain an indictment, a prosecutor must present proposed charges to a grand jury, a body of jurors that investigates crimes and decides whether charges should be filed. Mr. Pisetsky, a top Chicago lawyer, was initially hired to defend the 37-year-old. But due to the transfer of Mr. Abbas to Los Angeles and his ability to practice outside Chicago, the lawyer was retained as a record counsel. As a result, Mr. Abbas hired Ms. Podbereski, a California-based criminal defense lawyer, as his local counsel. In the application dated January 21st, Mr. Pisetsky, who claimed to have been negotiating with the government over the case, said Mr. Abbas suddenly stopped communicating with him. My communications with Mr. Abbas are by telephone, given my inability to fly from Chicago to Los Angeles due to the pandemic. 
Ms. Podbereski, as local counsel, has made several visits to see Mr. Abbas at the Santa Ana Jail and has also communicated with him by telephone. I, through Ms. Podbereski, have provided Mr. Abbas with a copy of the discovery, reviewed it with him, and had numerous conferences with Mr. Abbas telephonically, and Ms. Podbereski had also met with him in person to discuss the case. After months of discussions with Mr. Abbas and negotiations with the government, Mr. Abbas now refuses to effectively communicate with me. I have made numerous attempts through family and jail staff to have him call to me to discuss critical issues. Mr. Abbas, however, has not communicated with me. He said the lack of communication has created a breakdown in the attorney-client relationship to the point where he believed that Mr. Abbas deliberately chose to stop talking to them. However, on January 21st, Mr. Pisetsky said he received a telephone call from Mr. Abbas informing him of the decision to retain a new counsel. He informed me that he is retaining new counsel. I informed him that I and Ms. Podbereski were moving to withdraw given his refusal to communicate and cooperate with us, the lawyer added. Abbas is also accused of committing fraud in Nigeria. He is wanted by Nigeria's Financial Crime Police, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Don't forget to like this video and share, and so you don't miss out on new videos, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. Until next time.